Oh yeah. You know what we're going to talk about in this video today? <laughs> That's so cool. We're going to talk about using old servers and RAID controllers. What this thing's doing right now is it's actually going to doing an inventory of the disks. And you see it does it two by two. There's only five, so we'll do one on its own here. We'll see that in a second. But basically, if you're going to buy an old server and think you're going to do anything with it, you're going to have to be willing to do a little legwork. Because otherwise, this stuff is useless to you. Now, you may be saying to yourself, you know, it'd be cool to have my own server. You know, I could do some stuff with it, even if it's older. And hey, you know, everything just kind of works, right? I don't have to worry about anything. It's, it's just a big PC after all, right? Wrong. Here's the deal, guys. There's things you have to consider when you start playing around with old server hardware. And one of them is that when you get that server hardware, get everything that goes with it, including all the software, manuals, discs, whatever you can get. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. You could be in a world of hurt. For example, we're looking at the mini configuration program that's built into the RAID controller of this Netfinity 5000 server. And it's kind of neat because you can look at uh, you can look at the status of the drives, you know, and the status. You could see how everything's configured. It's all very interesting. Uh, you can look at the logical. You can see what the status of the drive. Everything looks good there, right? You can go to advanced functions and do some other nifty things. You know, you could you could if you if you, now there's one neat thing if you if you had a uh, Say you had a set of drives that came from another server that died, you could literally take those drives, all those drives, shove them in this server, and they store a copy of their configuration that they could read back to the IBM Server 83L BIOS. That's kind of a neat feature, but here's the thing. That's where the array building and the drive setups and the RAID stuff kind of ends as far as configuring the RAID controller without additional software. Because nowhere in here do you see anything that lets you build a new array. Remember, this is server hardware. This is for enterprise. This isn't something you bought from Best Buy. There's an assumption here. There's an assumption that you're going to keep all these materials and that while this stuff may be available, it's not going to be all encompassing, mostly because it couldn't be, because it wouldn't fit in the space of these old, old, uh, old PCs uh, ROM chips. You know, they have very limited, limited space. So basically all you can do here is look at the status of the server uh, RAID controller, but you can't really do much more with it. So what do you do? I'll tell you what you do. And we're gonna let this go by and let it continue running. You make sure that when you buy your server, you, if you're lucky, you get something like this. Now, I was lucky because I'm the one who actually installed these servers originally for the client. And uh, so I knew where all the books were, and I got all the books when I bought the server. This is the actual IBM manual that came with the book, with the server. And with it, all the software. And what is this right here? The most critical CD-ROM package you're ever going to see in your life when it comes to an Infinity server especially with a RAID controller, because without it, your RAID controller is basically worthless. Even if you put brand new drives in it and wipe the configuration, you'll never be able to build a new RAID array, and you basically have an empty drive case with, cage with useless spinning disks. And, you know, it comes with, it comes with driver disks. It comes with disks that if you have older operating systems, you could actually load the files, like, say, Windows 2000. Uh, it's even got a SCO Unix uh, uh, driver disk in it. But this disk right here, this CD-ROM is critical. 
This configuration program not only auto boots when you put it in the put it in a CD-ROM drive when you're setting up the server to allow you to actually do something with the drives. It also will allow you to install the configuration program permanently on whatever server ha hardware you have. For example, let's go into our server. And I'll just go ahead and log in here. This is server 2003. And what you'll find here is that, remember how our mini configuration program and I have upgrades coming, so that's why the colors are so low. I'm going to make this a lot better. Um, well, we're going to go in, and you see this here, IBM Server Raid Administration? This little app right here is God to you. This is where this program actually lets you set up new arrays, take them away, add drives, change the configuration, all that stuff. This has a world of functionality that the built-in program doesn't. Without this software, your RAID controller is useless. And that's just the nature of the beast. Maybe some, maybe from H... Well, actually, I've seen HP controllers, too, that didn't have much more than what I showed you in that IBM Server RAID 3L mini config. Most servers aren't going to have a complete set of tools to deal with arrays in the firmware. You're going to have to load something else. So if you're going with an older server, here's the thing. Get the documentation. Get the software. It's critical. And that's all we'll say for, the, for today's little video. Remember, guys, get it all and get all the info, or you could be stuck with a big piece of iron that don't do nothing.